but it is about time to get started here. So welcome to our very first workshop of the new year. Whether you're joining live today or watching via recording, we hope you find today's discussion topical and helpful as Lindsay Valdez, our VP of Marketing Strategy, and myself, Caroline Romano, Senior Marketing Manager here at, Mark, at Freestar, uh, will be walking you through important optimizations for Google SERP features um, in the year 2024. If you yeah. haven't joined one of our workshops before, uh, we like these to be more of an open discussion where questions are more than welcome and encouraged. You can drop your questions into the chat at any point um, uh, throughout today's workshop and we'll address them as soon as we can or feel free to raise a hand, come on camera and chat with Lindsay directly to ask your question. This will be recorded and sent out via email for you to refer to at any point. So be on the lookout for that in your inboxes uh, later this week. Um, we're excited to get started today. So without further ado, Lindsay, you may take it away. Thank you so much. I am so excited for today's discussion. Thank you, Caroline. Um, optimizing for Google SERP features in 2024. I have a lot to cover. I do think it will be only content coverage for probably 30 minutes, uh, depending on questions, and then plenty of time after that for Q&A, should you have any. And as usual, I love looking through all the familiar names and faces that are joined live with me today from publishers, um, publisher friends, content people, industry people. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, you can look at the agenda right here. As Caroline said, I like to keep these very informal. Feel free to pop on screen, ask me any questions or have any discussion, throw stuff out there as we're all learning together. Um, I'm going to kick it off with a little bit of state of the industry. It was a wild 2023. Um, then head into some CERT feature opportunities, cover a little bit about the search generative experience as I know that is absolutely top of mind for most publishers, including including myself, on what that is going to look like in 2024. Google Discover, Google Perspectives. People also ask in other carousels, modules, this is more like the featured snippet area. And then I'll cover some final thoughts on trends and predictions of the year. I will jump right in. Okay, so what you see here is a list, a full list of the features. Um, Google the search results that you that you currently have existed in, even in the last five years, have changed a lot. Um, but at the bottom, you can see where we were traditionally at the 10 blue links, where you would search for something. There would be a couple boxes at the top of paid ads, and then blue links or traditional search where you had an industry of content people, publishers, and SEOs trying to um, compete for the, the top spot. Now, even before we get to those blue links, you have all potentially, it's different for every single type of search, but you have all the list up there of things that may be a distraction or a click opportunity before you even ever get to the 10 links. So there's a lot going on in the search results. You've likely seen changes happening in real time and in uh, there's times where I'll just do a search on my phone and be like, where did that come from? That's news. A lot is in beta right now, but I would like to, um, at least as far as what I'm thinking of Google, in the year to come has a lot to do with the user interface and using Google, Google evolving as this tool. Even now, Google has been a tale of gradual evolution uh, into, the, into a more user-friendly environment. However, at the cost of that, the features while enhancing the actual user experience, the list of features that you see here and all the different uh, value packs around the search results, uh, it's inadvertently cast a shadow on organic search results and organic traffic um, and people thinking how the number one spot years ago is not the number one um, necessarily spot today. Um, 
Okay, when you look at this, there's some that are going to be more familiar. Um, and this is why when we talk about the worry and concern in the coming year of traffic, a lot of this has already been living live in the search results for the last few years. Um, I've worked with publishers myself that took huge hits back in 20, you know, as far back as 17, 18, 19, when Google started what I call is an answer box, but some people call it position zero. Some people call it instant answer. And it's where Google was answering the queries at the top of the search results, taking away the reason for users to click. So the more information, of course, that a user can see directly on their phone without ever having to click impacts traffic. Um, and some of these are new, some aren't. You've seen people also ask top stories. That's the news carousel. These things have been around for a while, but you'll notice in the more, uh, more the ones that we'll cover today, the newer ones on the list, shopping ideas, related searches, tweet carousels, answer, um, perspectives is a big one. Also in the news is a new location and what publishers are doing and can do um, in 2024 to gain as much opportunity to be in those positions. So Lens, uh, this is what you're saying seems to paint a better picture of coming search results than what we're actually been hearing and that it might not all be doom and gloom. Is that accurate, would you say? I guess that's something that everyone that can choose for themselves, but that is exactly how I'm, I'm looking at this is more opportunity. Google is getting better. There's going to be changes. Nobody likes change, but that was a perfect way to put it. I've heard just so much negativity fill the, fill the air for pretty much since Google introduced these new search results in the summer, early summer of 2023. Um, so I think so. That's how we're going to choose to look at this, that it is just more opportunity potentially for publishers to rank um, in the coming year. What I like a lot is that we, uh, a lot the recommendations have remained the same. There's not going to be, a, there's not a silver bullet to appear in all of these. And publishers that continue to go down the path of things that we talk about and educate publishers all the time, which has to do with quality along the lines of quality, providing a better user experience. Those are the ones, spoiler alert, even to the very end, that are going to are going to continue to get traffic from Google. I do not think there's going to be a time. Okay, I switched slides here to the, the first, the big one, search generative experience. I'm not sure I think there's a time when when users aren't going to websites, when users aren't using Google to drive to websites. So um, figuring out how to optimize for the new opportunities, it's just a different, it's a different landscape. Search and ex experience. So this is, um, you can see two screenshots on the right of times where I've been using the beta test. This is not released, but I'm sure many of you have go gone to your Chrome app and enabled through Google Labs where you can test new search result features to see that this is an AI powered snapshot of response to query that um, also provides links to dig a little further. But whereas I thought the ans the threat of answer box was um, what does the name Lindsay mean? It would like, or what do you boil water at? It's like these one word, one, one word answers or one phrase search generative experience is supposedly again in beta, but supposed to be able to think, think differently, think in more in depth and compile different, um, even different snippets from different web pages and compile this sort of, um, a sort of smart answer for a user. However, there are certainly queries that Google will not use generative search for. And they've said, you can see it right there on the screen, they've at least at the moment quoted, when Google feels it can provide a better answer or better experience for the user. Um, I think one of the hottest topics surrounding it when it first came out uh, or was being talked about is that these answers, whatever Google's collecting is scraped from your websites. And so having, um, at least to me, it kind of felt like a stab in the back to have gone down the route of quality content, telling publishers, encouraging them to do that, just to have Google take it 
and then not provide such a click. And another thing is that I don't, these are not released. I'm not, Google's done many things all the way up to the, through beta and then not gone through with them or figured out that they needed to be way scaled back versions. Um, we all know Google is an ad company and Google's reliant on ad revenue. That's their number one source of revenue. Can the SERPs, even what you're looking at right now, the search results, that's left screen. There's no ad there. Can Google make the same money when they are uh, you know, taste, taking that traffic away from publishers? So that's a little bit about what it is. Um, let's see. The strategy so far, this is like more important for me to share with you guys what other publishers are saying and doing just as much as what I've researched and industry experts um, have said, which is included here too. But strategy so far, I mentioned this right off the bat, hasn't hasn't changed much. There did right off the gate come uh, some code you could add to block the scrapers um, from accessing the content to display. However, that's debatable. And keeping all of the correct right content from these and therefore cycling around potentially low quality, it could go in several directions. Um, it could encourage Google to not fully launch these. I think that's been the biggest struggle so far, if anyone agrees, is that you had a group of you know helpful people tracking every wrong answer they could find in the search results from the largest mammal being a not, it wasn't even a mammal. Like we had these instances of the web kind of laughing and making fun of Google search generative experience, pulling false answers. And I think, are people really ready for such machine generated style of content? Uh, publishers on the content strategy side, you'll see in bullet, the, the last few under publisher strategies is uh, approaching in a way that Google can't answer, right? They can answer the very black and white things. What they'll never be able to do is probably authentically uh, you like feelings, opinions, that sort of um, authentic user interaction that they can't, can't, mirror. Um, I found myself going to way fewer blog posts than, than, than previous years, but there is something to that, that people are looking still to hear uh, the answer in some, uh, another human's words, who's gone through the experience. And why would Google put so much behind um, EAT of, a, of that if they weren't somehow going to keep those answers going in the search results? All right, what another, uh, la there's there's things you can actually do to tweak copy. You can, so that was in putting point of views. You can aim for the carousel. They're even in, on the right hand, you can see a little more, even in, you have that block of content. This is somewhat something people didn't want to talk about when it first launched is right under the generated response is still the search results. And so for a user, they can choose to read it or not, but if they just keep scrolling, you're going to have at least an opportunity to continue to gain traffic. So how do you per, how do you position yourself to be in the um, in the recommended products or the ask the next question somewhere in the in the cards up at the top within that answer? So those are all factors pulled from what makes sites ring today. So keeping quality. Um, really providing the source of uh, education and information in your content will help Google be able to extract that and put it in the search results. All right, so drop any questions you have in the commenting on search generative experience. I believe, you know, a lot is yet to be seen. That's my final comment on this slide. We don't know the impact. I know some people have said 30% traffic loss, 60% loss, but if you weren't appearing in those top spots in the first place, of course, that will that will impact the actual loss you will have seen. When I've spoken to executives internally at Freestar, I said, hey, have you anyone checked out 2023 traffic numbers? They were 
they are, for many publishers, that was a 30 to 60% drop. So has some of the hit already be, been taken? And if so, how can the brand pivot to optimize for these new placements to regain? Uh, so no doom and gloom from this on my side. There, there's going to be more opportunities than ever for sites to, and I don't think people go into Google to look for more information is a thing that's going, going anywhere. All right, so the next slide is Google Discover. And this is not a new traffic source, but there's been some significant changes to the way Google is handling Google Discover that makes me think there's more to come and more opportunity here in the coming years. And it also is, is um, I've seen it, I've seen it over last year when publishers have dropped an organic drop, there's usually a correlating drop to Google Discover. Google says there are two different search engine, like algorithms that rank Google search and also decide what to display in, in Discover. Um, but they're, they're very tied together and many signals are the same, I would say. Quickly what it is. So on the right, you see some screenshots there. Um, Google considers this their query list search product. It was always meant to be this way. It was always meant to be an area of Google to drive referral traffic, not organic search traffic. Um, it's based on historical behavior. In the, in the past, it's been solely based on um, what you've searched for in the past. Google, if I was, if I was always on horoscope sites, there would be horoscope articles and things naturally below there. The new, the new changes are, you can see it on the middle, like the screenshot on the left of the two screenshots where it says following. Google is now giving, and this is a trend across all of these sources. Google is now, and even crosses over into how, how with cookies going away, is the control of the user and the control of the publisher and letting, even when it comes to search results, having allowing them to have more input into what they see. So you'll now see following and there's now an actual way in the screenshot on the right. Uh, you can see with that in the toggle, if you were to do it online, that would, let's see if I can, um, okay, you're following. So in that, in the little three dots next to the left of the following, that's where you're on a site and you can choose to follow the site. Um, I believe this could potentially make up for some additive social traffic loss. If you think about it, there's several things about this that sounds a little bit like a social area or at the very least a, a referral traffic, like a, a smart news kind of area where you're allowed to choose who to follow or who content you want to see it. And then you don't have to search for it. So it's again, the headlines you didn't know you needed to read until you saw them. That's completely different than Google search where there's an intent and the user goes there for a reason. This is more like, oh, I definitely didn't know I needed to see that about Jason Kelsey, but it's in my, it's a tool. It's more of a different, it's a different user face. Um, so publisher strategies so far, Timely trending content tends to do better. It is a rarity that I come across evergreen, unless it's seasonal, I think seasonal, but there's a, there's a timely piece to seasonal content, right? Um, in there, so if you're publishing just evergreen, it could be an opportunity if you get some time sensitive content. This traffic while attribution, uh, I I believe there was some hang up with GA4. It was very easy to find discover traffic in uh, Google Analytics, the old UA version. But when it switched over, I believe the attribution changed and it's it's a little muddy. But however, in the meantime, they put a section in Google Search Console where you can monitor your performance and clicks from Search Console, uh, from discover traffic. So that was a little bit of, of an investment on Google's end. Another, uh, the only code related aspect to, and I still, I still find it on websites where publishers 
their feature images are too small and they're there. Google requires a 1200. Oh, that says PM. I will switch after this before we hand out PX 1200 pixel max for um, a, a 1200 pixel width of the pictures of the images to be included. Um, so fix that. Look at your template. If you're not including that, that should be a change that you make. You can also submit your site to Google Publisher Center. This gets your publication in the um, queue or realm of other publications that they they pull from. And then lastly, or I'll pause for questions, the publisher, Google used to say you had to apply to get into some to certain areas. No longer is Google operates now in more of a way where as long as your content is accessible and they can see it, that everyone is sort of eligible for both news, but also about Google Discover as well. However, what they don't say as much is that you have to follow all those same content regulations. So where a site can get by being a little more risque, not suitable for work, those kind of um you know, non-family friendly, which can be their brand. It can be completely fine and known in how they operate. Google is going to flag and block sources from that, right? Because if you're not actively searching for, um, I'm going to find like, what's a, what's a soft example? The most inappropriate memes this year, you know, something where if, if I'm searching for that, I'm looking to get whatever Google gives me back, right? Whatever I click on, it's kind of like, I intentionally wanted to see, you know, content of that nature. They're not going to just put it in a news, in your news or discover, which is a, again, a query list search feature, if a user could potentially find inappropriate things on the page. So if you're not being placed in Google news tons and, and that you know that there's a reason why, it's likely gonna be the same exact reason for Google discover. The more search friendly you can be, the more um, informational and kind of just informative in how you you speak and the safer safer means can kind of increase your chances of being in Discover. All right. I have a few questions for you, actually. Okay. Um, so after your point about the timely trending content, should Google Discover be a top priority for news SEOs in 2024? Should it be a priority? There's a, this is another thing. So many publishers could get on screen right now and say, it is, it's the most unstable traffic source that there is. So for me to say, you could have 500,000 page views yesterday and zero from Discover today. If someone told me that, I would say that's completely normal. Unfortunately, that's normal. You can't predict it. So in that in that scale, yes, you should make sure. It should be a priority that you're eligible, that you have that image metric correctly done, that you are following the content requirements Google's doing in that aspect. Um, and even this seems even a little more like a social, a potential social engine without any, with with a lot less, I'll say, Facebook traffic and Twitter traffic to publishers, this could be um, an additive traffic source. So yes, focus on it, make sure, you know, monitoring it, but relying on it, making sure that, you know, there's nothing you can do to control Google Discover traffic. Um, so keep that in mind while you're also keeping it a priority. Great. Um, and then in your experience, what do you know about the nature of Discover Traffic? Uh, I will say what I haven't, I haven't mentioned what impacts it heavily. It can be your headline writing, the way that you can position a topic to seem or to just make sure that you know it's timely, like coming in, making sure that comes through for, um, in the headline form, images are very quality images, not just the rate, like the, the 1200 pixel minimum I talked about, but also quality, grainy, fuzzy, non-responsive images, things you can't tell what it is. Google, more, more now than ever, they 
pick up on image quality. Um, and I believe it already, I, I spoke to the aspect of how unpredictable it is. So that I, that's a, an important part to know. I have, I have seen publishers just be devastated at the loss of discover traffic when they had, you know, for a month, I had discover traffic the whole month. If it, if you're consistently seeing discover traffic and it drops to zero or very low, I wouldn't just sit back and, and say what I, what I just said, all I, because that could be indicative of something being wrong. Just double, just spot check, see if there's anything wrong. Um, or, or if you then correlate it to the, oh, my discover traffic went away, but also my organic search traffic took a big drop, there's likely something wrong. Like Google, something happened. Um, but if it is very up and then and sporadic, like you'll see spikes and then the very net, you know, the article will be gone and driving, that's that's normal. Okay. Okay, great. Um, a few more questions and some came through direct message. So I just put them in the chat as well. But one, where can you find the publisher center? It is, let's make sure that I have, um, we can get this to you, but it is at publisher, let's see, publisher, publishercenter.google.com. Write that down, publishercenter.google.com. Uh, I think this is important. And many of the top publishers I talked to were like, yeah, yeah, we already did that. We, of course, we've done that. Like it is validated to be um, something that you should do when there's any, when anytime Google allows you to give them more information on your site and your brand. I talk about this with structured data a lot. Like why wouldn't you want to have Google just be clear about what you're an expert in? And so by registering your site there, it allowed, it has the normal fields of what your publication about, where are all your title um, navigation links. It'll ask you things like that. Great. And then we had a question come in from Joe. Do you have any idea if a WordPress post or page performs better on Google results? Um, he asked because they have found that their posts seem to do much better than their pages did. And the post, is the whole site on WordPress or the post on WordPress? So yes, I almost would say um, WordPress, I'm gonna pull up the chat anyway, so I can read it, Joe. Okay, okay, okay. So you, I think this question is the whole site's on WordPress. That makes sense. I was gonna say versus a non-WordPress. I believe there is something, and I think it's more into how the code is written for the, for the actual, for WordPress as a system is very clear. So pages and posts, you know why that I, I agree posts do better than our pages. What they're saying, and correct, you can drop it in the chat, Joe, if I'm wrong. Um, what he's saying, you have posts, these are two different templates in WordPress. And you have posts, those are your articles. And you have pages, which tend to be your, your navigate, your, like your um, category landing pages. That's what I'm thinking at, your category landing page. So in my experience, it is just, I don't know that I'd say they do better because it's a post versus page. But if you think about it, a post in nature is this, this ideally long form, substantial, high quality, useful, use, usable set of content for the person. More traffic goes to those pages. I, it is rare that I see pages ranking high in in Google Analytics for a publisher because you've had you would have had to elevate yourself to be a leader in things like low carb recipes like you know how hard it is for a publisher to rank and to hold the authority to for, for something with so much volume and short tail that's another piece of this usually your category or your pages are short tail those are, you know, very competitive, harder to rank more and, and take more to do so. And then when you have an article headline that's long tail, it's more specific, less competitive. So that's my answer there. Great. A um, few more for you. <laughs> uh, from Clint, we've noticed a significant year-over-year -year drop across our sites in average engagement time. 
Have you seen this? And do you understand what could cause this to be excessively low, like less than 20 seconds, which seems impossible? For one, when something like that, when someone's like, I, isn't it great? I have a 15% bounce rate. I'm like, something's broken because <laughs> no, you don't. So if you do think there's tracking errors, I see it all the time, the GA or GA4, um, there's, th that could be some sort of glitch in tracking, but, uh, or like duplicate GA codes will make metrics like bounce rate and time average engagement time. Um, so I love the, I love these questions. You guys are so great. Also, Clint, if you happen to be talking about GA4 versus GAUA, they're calculated completely different. So yeah, this, no, got, go ahead. I'm just saying, no, I, I've got an actual drop in GA4 that's measured okay. from GA4. Okay, thank you. Where's okay. uh -huh. um, engagement time? I tend to go down the path of looking, which you probably already would have, looking down, did anything change in the page or links to those pages or um, the template of the page? Did you have a, you know, a vertical gallery format? Infinite scroll changes can cause things like that. Um, if you say no to all of those, like literally nothing changed on the page. Um, and that's very low. If you went from like a minute to 20 seconds, I'd have to see, I'd have to think something could be wrong in the way that it's tracking. And then, so, oh, go ahead. No, just saying we're looking into it. So I appreciate it. I just thought <clears> that it was good to hear your thoughts on it. Yeah, not normal. I would explore further if it's an excessive drop like that and nothing on the page has changed. If you had some, you know, an editorial team come in and add a new this or that, that stuff can certainly throw it off. Um, check in and tell your people, tell your team, check in incognito. Sometimes there's pop-ups that like, you know, it's error. Error could be causing in some way. Like, oh, we didn't know that now you know, something catches you right on, on a first click kind of thing. My email address is also at the end of the slide. I'll pitch myself real fast, but available for uh, any questions really, but especially to, to free star publishers to always be able to reach out. We have uh, not just myself, I have um, team members who can look into these and look in, look into just troubleshooting things. It's, it's actually where most, many of our questions come from is I'm seeing this, I need another set of eyes and we're happy to get on short calls or just support in any way for that. Yeah, great. Um, and then one question from just Justine came in, is there a way to direct people to follow you on Google discover? a link or anything, or we just have to hope they get it and do it. I, this goes to, to brand loyalty. That's such a great question. Yesterday, I was trying to explain this to my uh, fabulous teammate, Jenna, and I was taking her through like a live example of how to follow someone. And I it wasn't, it wasn't coming. It wasn't like easy in the sense I was Googling how to do it. And it was for the Daily Beast. And I love that publication. So that kind of, it drove the conversation in two ways. One, people have to be willing to take a few steps. Like I love that brand and their content so much that I was willing to spend five minutes to figure out how to follow them. Second to that, the much better answer is yes, that you could easily turn this into um to almost like a marketing play. It's, it is easy. You like on the left, on the right hand screenshot there, you'd click that little hamburger three dot drop down and it says, follow, you know, follow this brand. Um, so to work that in, you know how on about pages, you'll see like follow us on and you have all that. I think there's depending on the nature of your audience, there's an absolute angle here to tell people to take the two steps to follow you on 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 discover and in fact that even inspires me to want to write up some copy to tell quickly like three steps to follow somebody on discover because it's sounding kind of social isn't it in the moment like if this were to take off and this is be i, I see it every day there's traffic potential from discover more than twitter more than facebook at the moment where 
you know, those are so easy. People did invest in being putting you. I wonder if they'll come out with like a social icon, even, you know, how like the old school social bars to follow on discover. I'll look into that more, but it would be education. It's very quick, but to encourage people to do so would be, is such a good idea. Okay. That was great. That was great. Next up is a brand new, totally new section to the search results. And if I had to pick, it's probably my favorite thing to talk about right here. It's called Google Perspectives. Um, this is a new tab. You can see it right in the uh, in the middle of the screenshot or the, the oh, both screenshots perspective. So it's a bar. And I'm seeing a lot more little tabs like this. I mean, you can see in the, in the, this is a great example to have used for the slide um, because if you think about how many pages are creative content, I think I last read, oh man, 70 million new blog posts, blog posts or articles are written every month. And that was, that's probably outdated. That was probably last year. Say a hundred million articles go up a, up a month, not a day, sorry, a month. Uh, on in some way related to Fenty Beauty. How would Google ever have one search result that packed in all these different um, correct intents that a user could be searching for? This was a lazy search query, Fenty Beauty. Now, am I searching for the brand because I want to buy it? And have I never bought the brand? So I want to know what people think about it. Like those are two... I wouldn't, I, you could search for like Fenty Beauty reviews, something, but as we know, users like I was here are lazy. You're going to search for like the, le le the least amount of things you have to search for. Um, so, and also with AI. So right off the bat, Google, based on my search query, they don't know what I want. My search, you know, what am I searching to do here? Um, and even if they did, how would they put the proper mix all on the same landing page? As it is, users are scrolling forever. You right off the bat, you have your sponsor there. Um, so by introducing an area called perspectives, it made the, the perfect sense to me because it encourages people to continue to write content of like point of view content. Do, do would, would we ever want Google to be a world that you're just getting the facts. I'm just getting like these question answer type type procedure. And Google, of course, is being like, we can be so much more. We we encourage content creators, right? They still need that narrative. So you have a new section here that it's rough right now. Uh, Jen and I, who I talked about earlier, she and I did, we spot checked yesterday. It's almost fully YouTube videos at the moment. And I'm like, this is not helpful, but this is where the beta works in. This is just like them working it out, getting used to things, determining, I can imagine on their end, how to decide what would go in perspectives versus what goes in other areas of the search results, like, like product. What about a Fenty product roundup? You know, where does that go? That's more e -com, not quite a perspective. So what I've noticed is this is very video-based. And even in the example, you can see we still have to, as as a as a group, as a group of publishers, we still have to be thinking about how to take users to the website for revenue purposes. Um, but it's becoming a mix of needing you need to be doing video. I would, I just, I can't think of a brand where I wouldn't think it's smart to invest in some sort of short form custom video to meet your audience um, because it's going to be pulled into more, more areas of the search results. But if the user was going to click on the top spot of uh, perspectives on the right there, so it's a YouTube video that says the Fenty Flex. If you're going to click through to that. It's going to bring you to YouTube's actual landing page or TikTok's actual landing page. So you jump platforms. We still haven't brought, you know, in our case, we add revenue. It's not bringing you ad revenue. However, watching the video has got to be a brand play. This is where you have to be talking, you know, don't make a video without saying your brand. 
that is going to be a huge narrative of 2024. Um, so you have that opportunity to use videos for your advantage. You can also drop a link. I see YouTube as a traffic driver more than I ever have before. I used to could pull up, you know, how many hundreds and hundreds of GA traffic, like source medium reports to tell what publishers are getting traffic. YouTube wasn't a driver in the top 10 normally in the past. Last year, it has become because I think it has become more on the list because you can drop your own links to the article. The Fenty Flex, there's probably whoever this is, probably has a website. Then there's an article about it that where she's in, it's all full circle, right? Where she's embedded that video in the first place. So you can click through to the actual article. Um, if you're publishing just the evergreen, just the very informational posts, it's an opportunity to use perspectives, use your own perspective, your own thought leadership, your own opinion to bring brand recognition and you as an expert experience EEAT, like it all, it's all a circle. You're by producing point of view contact uh, content, you're yourself leveraging yourself as a leader in the space. So it has some brand, brand strength. Um, I hope to see invest in short form video, uh, Google in my, my thoughts is they want to have a place still where a human is very certain they're, they're, or, you know, more certain that they're getting another human's perspective on something before they buy or invest or whatever it is they're looking to learn. Um, I think that's all in this section. Oh, I am hoping to see actual article blog content appear here instead of the, just the sea of, the sea of YouTube videos that it is in the moment. Linz, we had a question um, come in from Le Gleb from the Moscow Times. Um, they said they're recently facing a dramatic drop um, in traffic, but nothing has really changed. But they did implement AMP, um, but currently AMP doesn't get decent traffic from Google. Um, do you have any thoughts on that? And how does lacking AMP affect uh, traffic in 2023? Is it a necessary thing to have in 2024 to get more traffic from Google? This is a great question. I am kind of two parts to it. I feel like if you implemented it and then all like just see a traffic drop, that is again, I hate to use the same answer to make like that Google is seeing it, that they are have properly started to like, if it's a new change, um, you finally implement an AMP. So it looks like AMP came on. I, if this is this is my honest opinion about AMP, if a publisher is struggling and I don't know exactly why, I'm looking, I'm reading your re response now. If you implement an AMP because you could not in any other way solve for speed, you are having these big speed problems related to design. AMP is is still an option. I think for many publishers, they they were able to solve speed on their own. AMP was always, has always been controversial for websites because of where the content sits, it essentially sits on, in, in Google's frame, the URL isn't yours. I'm sure you'll know this from, from having implemented Google released AMP with the promise of more traffic. This was what year I can't even barely think back to when AMP launched 2016. I worked for a website called she knows that had a, where beta AMP website publisher chosen to walk through this beta program. I believe at that time, Google had be grown impatient with websites handling speed on their own, right? You have them trying to set the narrative. They send, you know, and then SEOs back them. So all of a sudden you had websites aren't, aren't fixing speed. These sites are slow. Let's release our own product that can solve for speed. So then you have publishers adopt it then they figure out that it monetizes less. It just, it just depends. I don't, if you realize, this is kind of painful too, a slightly painful answer. If you realize that your traffic has dropped 
and your monetization of the traffic on the pages you do get traffic on is less and you're not getting more traffic and it's like speed is fine on its own, I wouldn't sit on AMP forever. I would be flexible in taking it off. Most publishers I work with these days do not run AMP. Many, many publishers I'll say do not run AMP. It's not supposed to drop traffic. Like that's something I wouldn't say is, is normal. I see publishers put AMP on and while it doesn't necessarily grow traffic, it doesn't, it doesn't cut traffic. So this is what I would do first. This is the first thing I would do. It's coming to me in real time here. Thank you. Is looking at the templates. Did something not get carried over that Google uses as indicative as a signal for either user experience? Um, for example, I worked with a site where the date and the author on the AMP version didn't wasn't exposed for some reason, really probably just error. And there's there's a correlation there to users trusting it and it was just getting less traffic. People were bouncing, Google was sending them less traffic. Um, so make sure that everything that should, you know, carried over when you created this new template. Um, AMP is a light, lightweight page version. So anyone listening that doesn't know what it is, it's like you take the page as is with all the CSS and pretty formatting and modules and all the different elements and images, and they you scale it way back. They let you have like, you know, HTML text, several images, but not tons of images. There's just differences on what they'll, because, it, because they want it to be faster. Um, make sure Google has a ton of tools that you can run your pages through to make sure that they're just, that that's not an error, that they're still seeing the page. Google search console, look in there. I'm assuming tech error would be the first thing you would think of. After that, make, make sure that the important parts of the element, maybe like on the old version, it had images that users loved and it kept the engagement high and people would scroll and scroll to see the images. And on that AMP version, Oops, you're only allowed to have one feature image and now it's just left this blank text and users don't. This is totally made up example, but check those, compare them to each other. Uh, and then lastly, don't sit on something that failed, that Google failed. I work with many publishers crushing it in organic search very fast and do not use AMP. Great question. Love it. Okay, and I do love how to this is added to just the, the length of the presentation and made it more interesting, all these questions. So I appreciate it. Um, in these last two slides, boxes and carousels, I understand this is not very specific. I did include some screenshots, but top stories. Oh, right here on the bottom where you see the Kings and the Phoenix Suns, at the very bottom, there's, uh, it says also in the news. This is a new pack, a new feature that Google released. Why, right? It has... Five news stories, why I say also in the news, maybe this in the future it will will is an area to bring in different domains, let's say, and you know, like a you know lesser known domains, give them a little placement, who knows, but it seemed like a lot of news results. And then the people also ask, that's one of the more popular things Google has done, I think, in the last year. This very likely could be replaced with the uh, search generative experience um, where they're kind of guiding users into the next question. Uh, it could it could be exposed. It could look different in coming years, but I think it's um, one of the better placements. So advice here is to understand all the various positions, create content to appear in these different news in these different areas. If it all makes sense for your brand, this is about expansion. It's not about less traffic, it's about more traffic. It's not about less um, visibility, it's about more. And won't it make you a better brand to work in time, news content or timely, time sensitive content into an otherwise static evergreen environment? It's gonna be more interesting for the user. Um, Google gives what's called structured, structured data, structured snippets, there's things, schema, there's all these different words for the same thing, but ways to code your web page so that it has, Google, number one, knows more about your brand, and number two, 
um, can extract, easily extract like headline. When it's in code, it's easy for Google, a machine, to be able to tell what is what. Author, colon, you list the author. That's like structured data. It's all on the back end. Um, logo and article, as I'd say, the, the breadcrumbs, those three snip, uh, feed, like structured data are the most common. Fill up, you know, all the top brands do them. Don't be the brand that doesn't. It's just a chance and opportunity to give Google end users more information about your brand. Um, diversify the content. We've talked a lot about that. I think that's one of the best pieces of advice to consider. Things like, I wrote, X has the carousel. This keeps changing, right? The way of what Google is putting in the search results. Tomorrow, it could be TikTok. I don't have any idea. Nobody does. So keep yourself flexible. Um, maybe traffic, and this is one of my actual final thoughts, but I'm going to skip to it. Maybe traf scale traffic is probably not the, the measurement of the future. It's going to be much more about... Um, what matters to your own brand and converting. And so be in the area, don't make traffic. Does it drive traffic? Well, then I'm not gonna be on X. Don't make that the discussion. More about, can you meet your audience there? Can you share useful conversation there? And it, it's also might appear in the search results. Um, all right. So my next slide here is also, this is not about SERP real estate, forget clickbait, build brand, but I think I'm going to say this again and again and again in 2024. Um, and in fact, we, we've said it for years now is that at some point people, you know, we're going to come around to loving a brand, identifying with a brand, trusting the big brands. It used to be a conversation where people would be like, um, Big domains are the only ones that get SEO traffic. And it's like, no, that's not exactly true. But they've built a brand in which they have recognition, millions of backlinks. You got to think of it in a different way. So what I would do right now, you know, think of the things like marketing and partnerships or collaborations with relevant other brands. Um, as you can see in the on the right, the screenshots, this was something that was new in the search results today this middle place right here. So in that where it's like my mobile display and it says, save your favorite brands to get more relevant results. That was an actual user interaction on my phone in the search results that happened this morning. So if I'm like, oh, oh I like Michael Kors, I like coach, I like the, if I identify myself, take these actions, Google is watching and listening and they are trying to create and this customized. This is not the biggest point of the slide. Customization for users is the direction Google SERPs are headed. Uh, ties in nicely with Cookieless Future, Topics API, being a publisher who can identify, you know, what you, what ads you want on your site. The users can now say, we want this content. This is all a part of it. Continue down the path of quality. Quality sites will, um, you know, forever or at this point reign supreme in any of these environments, clickbait is is, is not going to be the thing that continues to get um, get the highest quality of traffic for your, and, you know, just where you want the users to be. Final thoughts. I cannot believe it, Caroline. I'm down to six minutes here. Wow. Those are just some great questions. Um, these, this is a lot of, of wrap up and we're happy to share, share the deck as well. Well, well, the video of course will be shown. Um, but we can, in this case, there's nothing private or sensitive about this deck. It was what I'm hearing from publishers talk about new placements in Google. That was the point. Um, and then, and then some of the things we've just been saying, saying continues quality will win. I just said that, um, I would expect a year of new user interfaces and new formats. I think that's clear. Like Google's changing. They don't want to be a static search result encyclopedia. They want to be engaging. They want um, to have discussions. That was another part. Perspect there's, an, there's some search results where you guys saw perspectives on the top. I saw, dis I've seen discussions and it's, Almost a replacement again for a Twitter environment where you had people actively talking and being able, that was the draw of Twitter. It's a community where you could discuss your thoughts and share it with, with other people. This particular part of the search results is leveraging um, 
sites like Reddit and forums. So they want that to be a part of the experience to be able to create. And that's not going to be solved with search generative experience, probably, right? They have a value, like a vested interest in sending a user to Reddit or to a site with a forum so they can discuss that topic with other like-minded users. Uh, diversification, that will remain the same. Emerging platforms, don't count them out. I mean, I too tried to shut my eyes that TikTok was actually not gonna happen. Trust me, I tried to ignore it for, for years. It appears to be around still TikTok. So what are you gonna, what can we do with it? It's really a brand mechanism. It's not a traffic driver, but it's a great place to, um, you know, where people are looking for, uh, you know, point of views and perspectives and products. And they're looking for all the things there. You can also take videos still from Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, um, optimize them for speed, but embed them on your web page to bring a, a more substantial experience to the actual web page. Uh, all right, I talked about scale. I talked about valuing human human opinions, personalization, and customization. One thing, um. The big one on this one that's different is focusing on the homepage. It's going to be one of my final thoughts. That was never a thing. I've never in 15 years of SEO experience or industry stuff, traffic stuff, told a user to focus on the homepage, right? That's for advertisers, make it pretty, but it's like, um, it's the articles as, as someone mentioned before, it's the posts or the pages that get the traffic. So that's been the focus. Your homepage is the place for you to get across that brand expertise. So don't ignore it. I, Google is factoring in branded search queries more than ever. Probably homepage traffic, even if it's a smaller sliver, probably matters to them in some, in some part of the algorithm. So brand strength is the name of the game for 2024. This has been fun. Uh, some things I, you know, I could, I could have taken any of those slides and do probably another, another discussion on. I'm always looking for ideas for other webinars. Also, people to join and Caroline and I up here on webinars. It's fun. We love the the panel vibe of getting publishers up here or or experts to talk about these, and we are always available. Um, directly from email, as you can see, mine's on here, but also if you're a Freestar publisher through your customer support manager, uh, we want to support you in your traffic endeavors in 2024 as best we can. And thank you, Lindsay. Um, as I mentioned, and Lindsay mentioned, uh, we will be sending this recording out to everyone who registered um, and we'll, we'll include the deck as well. So keep a look out for that in your inboxes either later today or tomorrow, probably latest. Um, and Lindsay, if you have nothing else, then I will go ahead and close this meeting. Thank you all for joining and stay tuned for more information on our next ones. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.